Hey guys, Dan here for, uh, with the Experience Podcast. Um, just a, a big announcement, I guess, here. Uh, basically, we're going to go on a short hiatus. Uh, Connor and I have discussed this. Uh, we're very busy this summer. We hope that you guys understand that we got a lot going on. Uh, we are planning to come back bigger and better in September, I think is going to be the first new release that we'll put out on the channel. Um, yeah, so we're basically going to uh, be putting out, I have uh, an old podcast that I do with some friends uh, a while ago uh, that I'm going to kind of re-release on this channel to give you guys some content. It will be every two weeks. So normally we release every Tuesday at 8 a.m. As you guys know, now it'll be every two Tuesdays um, just cause, so we can stretch out the content. Um, and then in September, we'll go back to our normal schedule. You'll hear Connor and me back on. I know Connor has, has also been very busy. He hasn't been on a lot. Um, but yeah, we're planning on coming back uh, a lot bigger. We may have some new shows to debut in, in this in September. Uh, we're not sure. We're still working out those sorts of things. We may do kind of a smaller uh, extra show. We may do a we may have a whole spinoff show. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that uh, in September when we come back. Um, and again. Uh, I hope you guys under, uh, uh, enjoy the following episode, which is, again, an old release that I did with some friends. Uh, this first one will be on two topics, so I'm kind of packaging them. There, hasn't, there wasn't enough content to justify one episode. Um, so the first one is on artificial intelligence, and the second one's on net neutrality. So you get kind of two interesting things. So uh, here we go with the show. story is uh, Google, who we all know is one of the foremost um, intelligence designers in the world, uh, has created an AI um, that can design and code other AIs. Um, so how they, what they plan to do with this is actually distribute it uh, to consumers um, who can basically use it to uh, they can tell it what they want from a from an AI, and then it will just build it for them, and then they can use it for whatever they want. Um, so it can be it can be used by the everyday person for a number of basically anything they want in a computer program. It can it can design. Uh, that's I mean that's my basic that's the basic story. Look if you want to get into a little more depth. Um. So. As far as I'm aware, so what Google did was, um, essentially, there's a bunch of researchers on their Google Brain AI team. And what they did was, they designed a machine learning system uh, that, or rather, they designed software that designed a machine learning system that essentially took a test that benchmarks software that processes language. So essentially what they did was, in, in other words, they took some software that they wrote. That software itself wrote some machine learning code. And the machine learning code that the software wrote took a test um, that judged how well uh, it could process natural language. And the code that the software wrote ended up surpassing the published results from software designed by a human. So, in other words, software designed by software ended up beating software designed by humans. And this isn't actually, well, the idea behind like software designing machine learning systems isn't actually like a novel thing. The fact that it was able to beat humans is the novel thing. Like this thing's been around, but they've never been able to get it to the point where it's better than humans writing um, machine learning systems. And there's like a lot of like impact this could have. Um, obviously like now humans don't have to like sit down and write machine learning code now, like software can do it for them. And on top of that, like, because the software is writing it, it ends up that um, 
the machine learning code that the software designs doesn't need as much data as um, human developed machine learning systems. So it's a pretty exciting field and um, it's exciting, exciting, especially how it's catapult to portion to the uh, portion to the place where um, you know software designed by software itself is becoming more robust than software designed by humans. Um, and yeah, I mean that's mostly what I have on that topic. Uh, I have I have someone else actually. If you want? Oh, oh nice. Go for it. I, I mean, it's not on this specifically. It's just while we're on the topic of AI. You've got good AI and bad AI. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe I told you guys about this, but um, a artificial intelligence researcher from somewhere or other. Is it Germany? Uh, designer, it, I, I don't think so. Is it Hungary? Probably, it's probably America. Oh. Her name is Janelle Shane. I was hoping it was Germany or Hungary. It could have been our listener. It, it could have been, yes. It was, that's accurate. Um, Their name, her name is Janelle anyway, she, Shane. Janelle Shane. She designed a neural net um, that creates that creates new colors just from RGB values and then names them. Uh, based on, I believe it's based on Sherman Williams Color Name Database, which is very extensive. So it just, it basically learned from that and named these new colors. Mm -hmm. um, and it went not well. Uh, it... Okay, uh, so it yielded color names such as Bank Butt, um, Turdly, Stanky Bean, uh, Gasty Pink, not Ghastly Pink, Gasty Pink, uh, and, and others along that same line, um, as well as a bunch that are just random characters forming nonsense words. Um, none of these colors are particularly attractive, and the names are worse. So I would just like to point that out as, as a nice little contrast with, with the Google work. That's funny. I You guys can look at this as well. I posted it in our chat. Yes, I, I remember seeing that. Burble simp. Burble simp. Uh, Sink. Stony beige. Dorkwood. N Naval tan. There's one called the flower that actually makes sense. How about, how about just sink? <laughs> That's not the color of my sink. Or dorkwood. Dondurf. All right, we're just wasting Rover. time now. Uh, Rover away. Sand, sand Dan. <laughs> it's not Sandy Dan. It's not Sand Dune. It's Sand Dan. Anyway, that's, that's the last that's, one. Uh, that's, that's... Alright. Uh, that's everything, then uh, we'll wrap it up there. We're running pretty long today, actually. That's fine. How long was it? Oh, wow, 45. Yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to say? Otherwise, that'll be it. Thank you to our viewers. Or listeners, rather. This is a podcast. Yeah. Well, hey, I there's an image that accompanies this podcast. Mm -hmm. Don't diss the image. Yeah, I put, I put a lot of work into that. Not really. Okay, uh, that's it. All right, Hyatt. Uh, thanks for waiting patiently. Do you have... So, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the floor. Oh, we're starting it now? Yeah, that's that's yeah. what Hyatt... Okay. Do your thing, man. I don't think you ever said that. I, I did, I did. Yeah. Not a chance you, you said rewind. that. Yeah. You rewind it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, net neutrality. It's a pretty important thing right now going on, especially since Tom Wheeler was replaced as the FCC chairman. Um, so, basically, I'm just going to ask people, do people here know what Net neutrality is sort of no, not really. Okay. Yeah. So, just for the viewers who might not quite uh, know what it is, it's basically if the internet is like a bunch of highways, and each highway leads to a site from your home, which is your computer. Uh, there are there are 
speed limits, but generally all the highways just let you go where you want, and they don't charge you for the money, uh, unless you're going through a toll. But that's different. So what you should, so what net neutrality is, it's saying, hey, you can't charge money. Uh, you can't charge people money for using the highways, and you can't charge the factories at the end of the highways or the websites to pay money for uh, priorities, prioritize. Basically, if c right now companies can't say, for example, build faster highways and then deny service of that to people who uh, can't afford it. But, well, and then, so uh, currently internet ISPs trying to argue they can do their jobs better if we remove net neutrality and allow them to build super information uh, highways where it will be faster and then you pay basically a price to be on that which is uh, to be on that so like Netflix and Amazon and whatnot or uh, would have to pay the ISP a fee to be uh, to have traffic to their website sped up in reality what that would basically work out to is the normal speed that we're used to right now will become the super the super speed I'm making air quotes but you can't see it uh, super speed uh, that they charge you for and then they would slow down whichever website that doesn't pay and we can see examples of this uh, already happening like um, I think it was AT&T or Comcast that purposely slow down uh, Netflix while having a yeah there was a uh, Comcast had a slow down uh, Netflix while having a negotiating issue or there was that time I think in in Verizon and whatnot or an ISP came out with their own money paying app so they d decided to make access or blo block access to all other ones like the Apple Pay stuff the kind the stuff you use on your phone to basically make your phone act as a credit card so companies basically in the past they decided to just block other companies alternatives that were already out there in order to promote their own which as you can imagine is pretty bad idea for us the consumers especially considering a lot of ISPs are already in monopolies and so they already can control however much uh, uh, whatever the hell they want because you have so few choices. And so net neutrality is really important because it basically ensures that, hey, you can't slow, the ISPs can't slow down access to, say, Fox News or CNN or, uh, or your favorite streaming website just because they didn't pay. Or that you didn't pay to be able to access all of that, and so net neutrality and Tom Wheel thanks to Tom Wheeler who had classified um, ISPs under Title Two, the ISPs currently can't do that uh, can't do that kind of stuff, which is pretty bad for us. But now that the administration has changed, Tom Wheeler has been replaced by a guy named Ajit Pai. And you might have seen him, maybe not. He is a uh, he wants to remove uh, ISPs from Title II and get rid of net neutrality, and he's doing so by directly misrepresenting facts and outright lying about some aspects of net neutrality in order to pretend like net neutrality is government regulations that's somehow th killing off the ISPs. Uh, which is just blatantly not true. He also has a giant Reese's mug, which he loves to let everybody know. And so basically, if you see people, like you can look up net neutrality terms on your own, but what ne Ajit Pai and like Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, whatever, are all trying to say is, Hey, we can do our jobs better if we're on, uh, if we're off net neutrality, which is just blatantly false because net neutrality doesn't stop them from establishing better lines if they want to. It just stops them from unfairly dividing 
websites into based on whoever's paying them or whoever's nice to them and then screwing you the consumer over and that's basically my two cents on net neutrality questions i guess yeah we don't really do questions yeah and yeah. uh i mean no i don't have any questions if that's what you're asking yeah but yeah, write your senator, talk to your, uh, cut, uh, talk to your representatives, do some research about because honestly, it's this isn't really a political issue. It's a pretty important issue, I think, for everyone involved. Uh, everyone, since everyone uses the internet nowadays, I'm sure you wouldn't want like a random just because your internet service provider decides, hey. I don't like this website. We're going to slow it down. That you suddenly can't access a pl uh, your a good recipes or upload photos or watch your favorite shows. That makes sense. Does indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, Is there a uh, limit to how long I have to keep talking, or nah, if you have anything else you want to add? Mm. Otherwise, uh, look, Jake, anything you want to add? Um, no. No, I think I think I'm good. I'm good too. Uh, shorter show this week, but that's fine since last week was so long. If that's it, Hyatt, thank you for coming on. Uh, All right. We'll be thank sure you to have you on me. some other time. We'll work that out. Mm -hmm.